Hello from Shanghai. This is Chris. Welcome to another episode of China Currents, your weekly news report of what's trending in China. Let's start this episode with U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's visit to China. On Sunday, Chinese Premier Li Qiang met with U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen in Beijing, where he urged the U.S. to work with China to adhere to the basic norms of the market economy of fair competition and open cooperation, and refrain from politicizing or overstretching this concept of national security regarding economic and trade issues. Yellen's closely watched trip to China, which includes meetings with senior Chinese officials, has underscored the signs of stabilization for China-U.S. bilateral ties amid increased exchanges between high-level officials. However, the U.S. is continuing its crackdown campaign against Chinese industries and businesses with claims such as overcapacity, posing risks for bilateral relationship. During the meeting on Sunday morning, the Chinese Premier said that under the strategic guidance of the two heads of state, China-U.S. relations are currently stabilizing, and China hopes the two countries can be partners rather than adversaries, with mutual respect, peaceful coexistence, and win-win cooperation. Next up. When Yellen was in China, Chinese officials hit out at U.S. and European accusations of overcapacity in China's electric vehicle industry. While Chinese experts believe that playing the overcapacity card shows the West's insecurity over China's competitive advantage, they added that this is also another form of de-risking from China, which will only hinder progress towards their green and low-carbon transformation. Chinese Commerce Minister Wang Wentao on Sunday hit out at Western accusation of overcapacity in China's EV industry, saying that China's advantage is built on innovation, not subsidies. Chinese Vice Finance Minister Liao Min on Monday also addressed the U.S. accusation of China's overcapacity in emerging industries, emphasizing the importance of market adjustment. However, trade protectionism measures are not the solution, he said. The remarks come as the latest response to recent hypes from the U.S. and Europe, claiming that China has overcapacity in some industries, such as EVs, as they attempt to restrict China's market access and protect their own industries through protectionist measures. Next up, following Yellen, Russian Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov arrived in China on Monday for an official visit. Many observers said that the China-Russian comprehensive strategic partnership will be further strengthened despite U.S. pressure. At the invitation of Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, who is also a member of the Politburo of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, the Russian top diplomat paid an official visit to China from Monday to Tuesday. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning said at the routine press conference on Monday that the two sides will exchange views and coordinate stances on development of bilateral ties, cooperation in different fields, and international issues of shared common concern on the sidelines of the 75th anniversary of the establishment of China-Russia diplomatic relations. On Tuesday, Chinese President Xi Jinping met with Russian Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov in Beijing. Chinese analysts said the meeting sends a strong signal that the China-Russia partnership continues to be key for the global strategic balance and a hope for promoting a multipolar world in which countries of the global south will have a greater role to play. Xi asked Lavrov to convey his sincere greetings to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Noting that this year marks the 75th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties between the two countries, she said China and Russia have embarked on a new path of harmonious coexistence and win-win cooperation between major countries and neighbors, which has benefited the two countries and their peoples and contributed wisdom and strength to international fairness and justice. Next up, Chinese President Xi Jinping on Monday met with the chairman of the National Assembly of Vietnam, Vuong Dinh Hue, in Beijing. At the invitation of Zhao Le Ji, chairman of the National People's Congress Standing Committee, Hue is in China for a six-day official visit beginning on Sunday. The head of the assembly is officially among the four pillars of leadership in Vietnam, which has no paramount leader. Noting that the pillars also include the party chief, the president, and the prime minister. While asking Wang Dinghui to convey his cordial greetings to Nguyen Phu Trong, General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam's Central Committee, she also said that during his visit to Vietnam at the end of last year, he and Nguyen Phu Trong jointly announced the building of a China-Vietnam community with a shared future that carries strategic significance, opening a new chapter in bilateral ties. 
Next up, on Wednesday, Xi Jinping, General Secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, met with Ma Ying-jeou in Beijing. Compatriots from both sides of the Taiwan Straits belong to the same Chinese nation, she said. The over 5,000-year history of the Chinese nation saw successive generations of ancestors move and settle down in Taiwan, and people from across the strait fight side by side to recover the island from foreign invaders. People on both sides of the Taiwan Strait are all Chinese, she said. There are no knots that cannot be untied, no issues that cannot be discussed, and no force that can separate us. He said that the difference in systems does not alter the reality that both sides of the strait belong to the one China, and external interference cannot hold back the historical trend of national reunification. In a meeting, Ma said that upholding the 1992 consensus and opposing Taiwan independence are the common political foundation of the peaceful development of cross-strait relations. The meeting marks the second meeting between Xi and Ma after the two had a historical exchange in Singapore in 2015. Next up, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has become the latest Western political leader to open an account on TikTok, an ultra-popular video-sharing platform owned by Chinese company ByteDance that is undergoing attacks from some Western countries, especially the US, due to national security concerns. Analysts said the growing number of Western politicians opening TikTok accounts not only proves the vitality and competitiveness of the platform, but also shows the accusation that the app is a national security threat is untenable. Attacking TikTok while using the platform only shows the hypocrisy of some politicians whose real intention is to suppress the development of Chinese tech companies. In a first video posted by Scholz's account, the German Chancellor sits at his desk, showing a glimpse of his office. He also announced his TikTok channel on X, formerly Twitter, saying that I won't dance, promised. According to German government spokesperson Stefan Hebersteit, the TikTok channel aims to connect with a younger audience that the German government has to go where citizens go to get information. Next up, the Chinese embassy in the U.S. lashed out at the U.S. for overstretching the scope of normal law enforcement after a number of Chinese citizens have been subject to hours of interrogation in a small black room while entering or leaving the U.S. Observers said the duplicitous nature of Biden administration will stoke up distrust, further foster hostility among peoples of the two countries, and derail the commitment of the two leaders to advanced bilateral relations. They urged the U.S. to heed the kind reminder from China and alter their operational behavior to avoid irreversible harm to people-to-people -people exchanges. Quoting data, a spokesperson of the Chinese embassy in the U.S. said in a statement that nearly 300 Chinese citizens have been deported by the U.S. since July 2021, including more than 70 Chinese students with legal and valid materials. Since November 2023, at Washington Dulles Airport alone, there have been 10 cases of Chinese students being harassed, interrogated, and after having their visas cancelled, deported. Next up, British Foreign Secretary David Cameron repeatedly mentioned China during his U.S. Capitol lobbying trip aiming to unblock a $60 billion aid package for Ukraine held up in the U.S. Congress. Chinese analysts said on Tuesday, it is a malicious move by Cameron is using to scapegoat China for his country's decision-making failures in the Russia-Ukraine conflict, signaling the UK's growing anxiety regarding the trajectory of the conflict. A $60 billion package of military aid is bogged down in the US House of Representatives as populist conservatives seek to block further funding for the two-year-old conflict and some mainstream Republicans demand concessions on border security before supporting the bill. Cameron made the remarks during and after a meeting with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken at the U.S. State Department on Tuesday U.S. local time and in an obvious bid to persuade the Congress to swiftly approve the aid. We know it's right to send this very clear message to all those watching around the world, including China, that we stand by our allies and we don't reward aggression that we help those who are trying to fight it off. And we know it's right for our own security. The British Foreign Secretary said at a joint press conference with Blinken on Tuesday. Cameron repeatedly mentioned China when he sought U.S. support for aid in Ukraine in Washington. This serves as a scapegoat for his decision-making failures in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. We're also using the issue to facilitate global geopolitical competition against China by the U.K. and the U.S., undermining China's international influence. These malicious actions deserve caution, said Li Haidong, a professor from the China Foreign Affairs University. 
And that's all for today. Thank you for watching this episode of China Currents. If you have any thoughts and comments about our show, please reach us at the email address below. I'm Chris. Looking forward to hearing from you, and see you next time.